Who else has got Christmas decorations still up? Me. It's January 11th and I still have my tree up. It's going to happen soon. But what I thought was more important today was to let you know what you need to know so far about the coronavirus vaccine and prednisone. Prednisone is an amazing, beautiful, miraculous drug that saves lives. It saved mine, but it's an immunosuppressant. That means it's decreasing our immune system's response. So is it really a good idea to get an injection of, a, of something foreign into our body while we're taking it? That's the question I'm here to answer today. I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. So I have taken my time to collect all the information I possibly could so that I could bring it all together for you and really give you a good answer today. I believe in science, I believe in evidence-based medicine. So when I'm talking about gathering information, I'm talking about reading studies, talking to experts, finding out what the experts actually say. And so what I'm telling you today is evidence-based medicine as far as we know it today. So since prednisone is an immunosuppressant, it's kind of scary. That decision to know what to do when you're taking prednisone and there's COVID involved is kind of a crazy situation. So COVID we know is a terrible infection. We know that it can cause horrible things to happen. And whenever in medicine we're talking about a treatment, it's always benefit versus risk. Benefit versus risk. Benefit is, is it helping and how much? Risk is, is it harming and how much? And so we want to decide, is the benefit of getting a vaccine greater than the risk of whatever that vaccine is for? And we're specifically talking about the COVID vaccine. So with the COVID vaccine, what benefits might we have? So the benefits are not getting infected with SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, COVID-19, that terrible pandemic we've been going through. And if you have survived this long without getting infected, that's awesome. But if you're taking prednisone, your chance of a poor reaction of doing terribly after you get infected is a lot higher than the general population. We've, they've done lots of studies and found that just taking prednisone alone leads to a worse reaction like you're more likely to be hospitalized more likely to die if you're taking prednisone so we know the risks of not doing anything we know that if you get infected while you're taking prednisone it's not going to be good what's interesting though is that they actually use prednisone and other steroids like dexamethasone to help people who aren't already taking a steroid and are hospitalized and are having trouble breathing. And then for those people, that's game changer for them, but they're not already on it. What I'm saying is if you're already on it and you get infected, your chances are worse. It's, it's scary. So your best bet is to do whatever you can to not get infected because it's a huge risk for you. Okay, so does this vaccine work? How does it work? And if it works, is it better than not getting it, right? Okay, so coronavirus looks like this, right? It's got these little spike proteins coming out on all sides and your body can see these and slowly, if you were to naturally get an infection, your body would see, oh, I recognize that and mount an immune response. And that's how you would eventually get better. So the vaccine is just for this little piece. And what they did, it's not actually that piece. What they did is they created, like pretend you wrote a letter, you wanted to bomb something and you needed a part built. And so you write a letter and you say, I want you to build this part of the bomb, just this one part of the bomb. And you send it to somebody and it's a message, it's like the blueprint for that one part 
of the bomb. That's what this vaccine is. It's not the part. It's not the bomb. It's just the blueprint for the part of the bomb. Because then your body can say, oh, I've seen that part. I know what it is. And mount an immune response and create your own protection against it. Essentially, what's amazing is it's not the virus itself. It's not even a part of the virus. It's just a message to say, this is how you make the part of the virus. Then your body can make that part of the virus. And what's also interesting about this beautiful, amazing technology that they've been creating for decades now, the mRNA vaccine technology, is that um, they knew that using mRNA to create a vaccine would be awesome. But the problem was if you inject it straight mRNA into somebody's arm, your body has these beautiful things called ribonucleases and they would just break it down and it would just be gone. So the real question was, how do we get your body to not break it down immediately and actually use it? And the beautiful thing is they figured out how to create a, a little castle around that mRNA. And it's called a nanoparticle of lipid proteins, a lipid nanoparticle, not lipid proteins, a lipid nanoparticle. And essentially it just protects the mRNA until it can go inside a cell. It doesn't go inside your DNA. It just goes, that lipid nanoparticle is really similar to what your cell membrane is. When you have a cell, it's got a lipid bilayer around it. And this lipid nanoparticle protecting the mRNA lets it go inside the cell. So then your body can actually use the information in that message. So basically what, what it is, is that, that envelope that you sent your letter with the coding your bomb part is made of the same thing as like what they would make it out of. It's just so cool how they did this. And then your body uses that information to make an M the actual spike. And then you're like, your body says, I don't like that. I, that's foreign. I'm going to make memory cells that can remember this and then spread throughout your whole body. So that's how it works and it's amazing. And some people are like, oh, it's happening too fast. It's new technology, it's too scary. This technology has been around like this, the mRNA part for decades. And then the lipid nanoparticle, they've had it ready for a long time, but they've just never had the funding and like an ability to put it all together. So it's not that new. And then what about rushing the trials? So when they create drugs, vaccines, whatever, they have to do phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And normally those things would happen over a decade and cost a billion dollars and it would be this really long time. And so people are like, how could they possibly do this in less than a year? And the thing is, because it's mRNA, we're able to do it. We don't have to sit there and wait for them to get made in an egg like the flu vaccine was. We don't have to um, wait anything. It's just beautiful that we can do this. Then what about these phases? So phase one, they were able to do really fast. That just makes sure that what they're giving you isn't going to kill you. And then phase two helps them figure out the dose. And that's how they figured out that we needed two doses. And phase three is what we look for the safety. And they tested it both two different vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna, one in 30,000, one in 35,000. And they were shown to be safe. That basically what you get when you have the vaccine is they inject it in your arm and your arm gets sore and you might get a headache and you might get fatigued and maybe you get aches and pain and maybe even a fever. Those are normal. Those are good. That's a good sign because it's showing that your body is releasing all of the correct things in the right order so that you can actually have an immune response when COVID really comes. Those things are not COVID. Those are your immune system responding to this 
foreign injection. So that is what it is. That's how it works. What about how well does it work? So when the government was initially um, saying on Project Warp Speed, when what would be a good reaction? Like how many people would have to be um, effectively treated for it to be quality? And at first it was 30 to 40%. They were hoping for that. And the fact that we have 90 to 95% efficacy is a miracle. Like there's no better word for it. It's a miracle that it's that high. Like the scientists who are predicting like, this will be good enough if we get 30 to 40% of people who are injected in, with it to have immunity. And it's 90 to 95%. Like that's amazing. It's, it's a miracle. So it works and it's safe aside from it's going to cause your body to have an immune response. That's what you want. You really want that. It's miserable, but it's a good thing, right? So then, let's, let me look at my notes really quick. What about other vaccines? You know, I've heard I'm on prednisone, I'm not supposed to get other vaccines. Okay, if this was a live attenuated virus, if it were um, like other vaccines, there's a few that you're not supposed to get when you're on prednisone, then yeah, there would be a concern. But this isn't a live virus. This isn't even a virus. This isn't even a part of a virus. This is the plans to create a part of a virus. So what about if you have an autoimmune disease? Is it safe for you? Well, that's a conversation you definitely got to have with your doctor. But for most people, having an autoimmune disease or taking prednisone is a much higher risk for getting terrible outcome if you're infected with COVID than if you were injected with a vaccine. But we don't know that yet because guess what? They excluded people with prednisone, on prednisone and with autoimmune diseases from the trials. They did. They don't study. So I can't say that you should definitely get it. I can't say that. I can't say that if you're taking prednisone or if you have an autoimmune disease, that you're taking prednisone for, you should definitely get it. I can't say that because we didn't study it. There's no like s perfect evidence showing that. Are they doing that? Yes, they're studying that. But the evidence that you are going to do poorly if you're infected with COVID is so high that the doctors who treat people with rheumatoid arthritis, with lupus, with other autoimmune conditions, Sjogren syndrome and Bechet's disease and all of these autoimmune conditions are saying, I, we anticipate that this vaccine is much safer than the patient getting infected and having to deal with the consequences. That is what they say, because even though we haven't studied it in these specific people, the evidence is so much worse if you don't get the vaccine. So it's the same for pregnant women and the same for breastfeeding women that they were all excluded from the trial, but it's there. there's not really a way that they can see that this could cause a problem in those potential populations. Because normally in autoimmune or prednisone patients, there would be a problem because there's actually a virus that might theoretically reactivate because your immune system's low. Or in pregnant women, if it was a, an actual live virus that even though your body can handle it, maybe your fetus can't. Maybe it could reactivate with your fetus. And so in all of those people, they always say, no, don't get it. Except this is an mRNA vaccine. And so there's not even a theoretical problem for people with um, all of those things I said. So the question is, should you get it or not? And like I started at the beginning, it's always a question of benefits and risks. For you, is it worth it to run the risk of getting infected or 
is it better to prevent the infection and the consequences of that infection? You really have to talk to your doctor about that and rely on high quality evidence-based medicine information and not some random thing that you read on the internet. I know that this is being posted on social media and so I'm kind of flying in the face of that, but I actually have a license. I've actually read studies and science and this is based on that science. So what I want you to do is to reach out to your healthcare provider and talk about what are your risks, what are the benefits for you, and get that information from a respected source. It's so easy to find any opinion online right now. You need to go to high quality sources for information. And then, so talk to your doctor, and then if you've decided together that those benefits outweigh the risks, then get that vaccine because it has saved lives. It's a miracle. And then if you found this helpful, please share it with those who need this information because there's so much misinformation out there. We need to give the good quality evidence-based medicine information a chance to outweigh the so much of the poor information out there. So please like this, please share it, please give, give this a chance for other people to know what they need to know at this time about the COVID vaccine and prednisone and other autoimmune conditions. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.